Hey everyone, quick update on the pool controller project. So I started it last year and I thought I'll finish it in summer, but in summer life happens, you travel, you have fun and the other thing is I had to take this pool controller, um, I had to install this on my pool reel and in order to do that I would have to pull the pool reel out of commission for a few days and since I was using the reel I decided to postpone it until winter so right now I have taken it out now um, I have done a few things so let me I don't think you can see this right now all right here it is so this is a motor that is going to run this uh, pool reel. Uh, it's connected on this wheel mount, uh, which is a part of the pool reel, so I can move the reel whenever I need to. And I'll go into more details later, but what I have really done is created a four switch system, and the middle two switches are instantaneous, so when you press the button, the motor moves back and forth. Um, when the, you move the end switches it gives you a predefined time uh, I have set it to 10 minute 10 seconds wait and then 10 seconds of run uh, I'll change it based on how much time it actually takes for me to wind the entire reel and how much time I need to go to the other side of the pool to make sure that it happens correctly but for now it's set up for 10 and 10 seconds the other thing I did was um, this is a BLE Bluetooth low energy module and I was able to connect this to my phone and in the phone I'm only using four controls up and down so I can move the reel exactly as I want um, but I don't have to be next to the motor to do that so let's quickly do a demo let me turn this on, power it on, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Okay, I have also added a sound, so anytime this whole thing is active, the sound will go on, and what it will do is prompt anyone who is using the reel to turn off this whole system before they use the pole, because I don't want the risk of electric shocks. Now. Like I said, if you move the middle two buttons, it will go one way or the other way. Now if you move, use the end buttons, this is going to go for 10 seconds. And then the motor starts and after 10 seconds it will stop. And the same thing will happen on the other side. Oops. You have to hold the button while it can capture it because anytime the sound is going on, the Arduino, the microcontroller is not really monitoring the switch. So Sometimes there can be a delay before the button responds and that's okay, that's by design. Alright, so that's that. Now let's try it with the phone. Uh, where is my app? This is an app called Dabble. Uh, this can be used to control microcontroller based systems. I might end up writing my own because it doesn't give me a continuous um, control. So when I when you press up, for example, it really has to happen while it can. Oh, sorry, I have to connect to the Bluetooth first. There you go. Now it's chirping faster. But the thing is I have to keep pressing it 
I cannot just press and hold because then it doesn't send anything. So what really I have to do is keep pressing it. And if I need to change the direction again I have to keep pressing it. So as long as I keep pressing within every 3 seconds it will keep going on and then it will stop. There you go. So I might end up writing my own app because it's not very helpful but for now it will work and I don't have time to write a lot of new Android apps right now. Uh, this needs a lot of mechanical calibration. So that's, that was the quick demo. Uh, if you are still with me, let me explain what is going on here. And actually let me turn this off because I don't like the sound. Alright, so this is a 100 watt motor running off of 12 volts. Uh, so with a simple calculation it's about 8.5 uh, amps but that's for a linear load because it's not a linear load uh, you will get maybe 12-13 amperes of uh, current. So what I ended up doing was, uh, how do I show this, this is a power supply. It's a it's a significantly large power supply. I initially bought a 100 watt supply thinking that this will work. Unfortunately, it didn't. So it kept tripping the power supply. Um, all the details from this point are going to be technical. So if you want to log off, that's okay. Um, a 500 watt supply is sufficient to provide power to this 100 watt motor because you are not only talking about a steady state load, initial load is going to be significantly high. When the motor starts from a standstill, there is a sudden surge of power and current which the power supply will have to endure. So I added a 500 watt power supply and this seems to work fairly well with this. There is an 8 bank relay, 8 relay bank. Uh, I am only using two of those because it's a two way switch. Um, I do plan to use it for another pump project near the pool, but we'll get to that later. Uh, there's a Arduino microcontroller. There is a this BLE module. I'll have to attach it somewhere. They haven't provided any hole to screw it, so I might have to just tape it down. Uh, there is this chirping module. Uh, I'm using a breadboard to connect right now. I'll remove it and eventually make hard connections once I know how to waterproof and take it back into the system. So. The other thing I had to do, uh, if you can see this, this is a, I think I have another one somewhere here. Yeah. These are big capacitors to absorb the voltage surge that comes from um, turning off the motor. And what happens is when you turn off the motor, as soon as you break the circuit, there's a lot of magnetic energy stored in the coils and if your breaking the circuit is instantaneous that's in theory that's infinite amount of voltage available to that uh, um, connection but theory is theory since there is still an electrical arc it's not infinite but it's significant amount of voltage in order to shunt that voltage down I have a capacitor here similar to this one and I also have a resistor to burn that. Anyway, there is a there is a resistor and a capacitor combination to burn that energy out, so it doesn't damage anything else. Since the surge voltage is also going to be much higher than 12 volt, I have gone with I believe it's a 63 volt capacitor. So a 63 volt capacitor. Uh, I forgot how much it was. 10,000 microfarad or 10 millifarad. So that's a lot of capacitance to hold here. Um, that's pretty much it for the electrical components. So the motor, the, the relay, the power supply and the RC component to absorb the shock is the basic part of the motor uh, assembly. 
the BLE is a tricky animal and let me explain what I had to go through to make that work. Let's bring it up so you can actually see me. This BLE, the Bluetooth layer uh, low energy component, it is not your regular Bluetooth um, receiver. You have to make an ad hoc connection, you cannot pair to it. And what's happening right now is as soon as I connect it, it is receiving connection data from something else in my house that I don't know what it is. But that's what was causing that delay in the chirp. And when I connect my phone, that stopped. Um, but like I said, when I use this app, come on. when I use this app, there are multiple buttons. I'm using the game joystick and I had to go and read what data is being sent when I press say up or down. And when you read it through the audio, you know, the commun serial communication always happens as bytes, not strings or characters. So, let me give you an example. The ASCII code for capital A is 65, and then B is 66, C is 67. If you read it as a byte, it will, it will come as a binary 65. If you read it as a character, it will come up as a capital A. And if you read it as a string, again it will come up as a capital A. I was getting a lot of junk data because of um, that read mismatch so what I ended up doing was read every character, every byte at a time and then add it as a character to my string and then look for that string. Took me a couple tries to understand but what, what I had to do was first read what I was getting, store it in a variable and then compare with that variable next time I send that data. The other thing that would happen is, since I am giving it about 3 second delay be between successive presses, if you press it more than once, instead of getting that string, you are going to get multiples of that string. So you cannot do a straight comparison equals. What you what I ended up doing was contains, uh, in our Arduino you use index of, so you say input data dot index of, uh, and then the string that you are looking for. And if it returns 0, that means it's a perfect match. If it returns more than 0, that means that's the position it was found at. If it doesn't find anything, it will return a minus 1. So all you have to do is, if input data dat, uh, dot equals, sorry, dot index of your string greater than or equal to 0, it's a success. Um, so that that's pretty much it. Uh, I would probably, let me do this, I'll upload this code again. and. Uh, the next step would be to put this on the um, in the pool and put a weatherproof covering on it. I am planning to use an old container, plastic container, maybe a bucket or something. And the only thing I need to expose is these buttons. So as long as these buttons are available, I can control this. So we'll do that next.